All right. Welcome, everyone. We have a very special podcast. This is number 50 with a man who just turned 50. And we got Eric Afria in the building. Eric, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, yeah, absolutely. You're a, you're a hot topic in the poker world. You you seem to just win, which is a good style to have. So you've won three WPTs now, which is second only to Darren Elias. It's pretty crazy, man. I got to admit, like you are, you might be a, a young wizard trapped in a, you know, a middle, you know, you're, you're 50, you're thriving, you're killing it, but I, you got some tricks. We're going to talk about that. Uh, first of all, though, for those that maybe don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Give me a quick, I know we actually have a limited time today, but we're going to yeah. cover a lot. So give me, give me a rundown. Who is Eric Afria? Tell me where you're from, born and raised. Give me a little bit of a background. Then we'll dive into some, some, uh, okay. so, so I'm born and raised in Montreal. My parents left Morocco in 1967. Okay. I was born in 1969. So that's why I just turned 50. Okay. So it was, uh, since I was a kid, I was always, uh, always, always a businessman. Always, whatever I touched, I made money. That was my, that was everything I would do, touch, I made money. That's a good style so, as well. Uh, exactly. So I started when I was a kid in flea markets and then I built a beautiful uh, clothing company that lasted 25 years. And in the last four years, I sold my, uh, I sold my clothing company and I got into real estate. So I bought some real estate in Miami beach and, uh, that's what gave me some, uh, the last We're neighbors. Four years, What's I, going I, on? I have more time to myself. Okay. How often are you in Miami? What would you say? Sorry. How often are you in Miami? Oh, uh, pretty often, like, uh, twice a month. So I do a lot of twice a month. Forth. I don't even get a phone call. We're neighbors now. We're neighbors now. We got to, we're going to have to link up down there. Yeah. We're, definitely, that's where I, that's where I'm at. Definitely. I would be there the whole month. All right. So you, should be there. Beautiful. So, uh, oh, yeah. The WPT hard rock, of course. Yeah. But give me, so tell me. So, okay. So you do real estate. Since I was a kid, since I was like very young, I used to always have cards in my hands. It was the weirdest thing. Playing with my, uh, Rami with my grandparents. I always had cards in my hand. And, um, we, we used to play five cards poker, closed cards. It wasn't hold them. It was like okay. five cards, you know, so you really have to be a good player or else you can't win in this game. Yeah. So uh, I used to always win all the time. I was always like a 80% winner till I got into, so, uh, till I got into cash games and I used to play high stakes cash game with high stakes people. And that's what, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, you know, people say, how do you win? You know, it's not just winning in cards. It comes with everything that you build as a child, you know, at the end of the day, you bring it to the table, you know, like character, toughness, mental toughness. I'm a person that, um, I, I recuperate five minutes later, five minutes later, I come back stronger. So even if I take the bad beats, I, I swallow the pill, I take the pill and I just move on and move on and move on. So I'm like a, a boxer that never gets knocked out. I'll just come back up and come back up and come back up. And that's how I play poker. I love it. Well, let, let's uh, let's scroll through a little bit here on some of your your career. We're going to go cover the WPT in particular, but just like I feel it, every single guest that's been on the podcast that plays poker, first ever tournament you play on your Hen and Mob is back in St. Martin. Must have been a vacation. You're down yeah. there. You take the final table, so you get on. You get in the mix. What 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 brought you to St. Martin for that? Was it for poker? Wow. Or just for fun? Yeah. So don't forget. Oh, you know, I was very busy with business. I was in China three four times a year. I never had time for poker. So before my, uh, my daughter was born, I used to do a lot of traveling with my wife. So I said, you know what? There's a little poker tournament in St. Martin's. Let's enjoy uh, poker and pleasure. And that's how I started playing poker is uh, it was always first pleasure. And I would mix the poker with it. That's, so that's good how, style. So you... uh, that's how I did it the last uh, five, six, seven, eight years. Well, so, so really you're, you're having fun. You're playing some playing some yeah. cards, you, you final table that you get around, you, you hit a, you hit a score, uh, for 118 K the Bellagio cup, um, WPT actually in 2010. When did you, when did it start getting That's my little superstar? Oh, hello there. Rebecca, say hi to everyone. Hi, I'm, I'm his wife. Yeah. Oh, hello. My wife? Yes. Yes. Sisters. How are you doing? I know. I'm, I know. You guys, when you're in Miami, we're gonna go to we're gonna go to dinner. And the kids, you got the whole family. Yes, you got a nice. superstar. Do they know that you're a superstar yeah, poker player or no? With a superstar. Okay. Let's okay. Go. So I see. So they're they're heading to a party, and I'm gonna stay with you guys for what? 
Okay, beautiful. Well, that's uh, awesome. They got to drop in. So you you score for that, but at that point it's, it's kind of a hobby or whatever. You're you're playing some, you're doing business and whatnot. Then you get in Bellagio again. You seem to do well there. You win a tournament, uh, 5K side event at Bellagio, 2012 for 110K. And then right. uh, were you were you really exactly. into it? I took my wife. I took my wife on vacation. Same thing. Yeah. It was like like uh, 2012. Yeah, it was like a little family vacation. And I would always mix it, always mix business and pleasure, business and pleasure. So business was like, let's play poker. And pleasure was like, let's be with the family. That's a good style. Very and nice. I never you traveled. Hit that. Besides that, I never traveled alone for poker. That was just, okay, family time, let's play poker. So, okay. So you, so you have some scores, but it's obviously more of a hobby. You like it. You're, you do well at it. You're, you're having some fun, knock down some tournaments. Then we fast forward to, I believe, yeah, 2000. 14, and this was a very special tournament at the Hard Rock, uh, right there at the Hollywood, Florida. And you end up winning the largest field WPT tournament of all time. I think still standing, I believe 1795 entrance, 1795 entrance. 1795, and you were there with me. I was right there. We were, uh, yeah, I got 10th for 66K. We got down to one table, and then, uh, yeah, I got knocked out. And you would have gone to win the tournament. What 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 was going through your mind here? Because at this point, you've had a hundred k score. You know, a million up top. Like, tell me what was going through your mind when you were playing, and as oh, it got wow. deeper, you know, when did? Yeah. So when I get when I when I got to Florida, I went for Passover. I went for Passover, so I brought the family down. My wife spent the whole week cooking. My mom lives there six months of the year, so I said, you know. I'm going to take uh, the whole family down for Passover. And my son was just born in, uh, in December. So I took the whole family down at the same time, family and uh, poker at the same time. So again, I mixed it up. So I bought in, I bought into the tournament and then I was moving along, moving along, moving along. And, uh, and it was just, I was looking at first place a million 81. I said, let's go. There's, there's only room for what, first place. Nobody remembers second place. Let's go get first place. Yeah, and uh, you and were there. You saw you saw the action. You know, sometimes a little luck, a little uh, aggressivity. And what was amazing is nobody knew who I was, so I could do my thing without people figuring it out. It's later on that they say, "Oh, this guy's got the moves. This guy knows what he's doing." And at the time, I would just do my thing, and I would just uh, they would never expect that I was capable of doing all these things that I'm that I do on the poker table. All right, so we I, we can't give away all the secrets. Let's talk a little bit about that. First of all, you said you just turned fifty. Uh, congratulations, that's a nice milestone. But you're, you're you're not old, but in the poker world, where you're playing a lot of eighteen year old to thirty year olds predominantly, you know, I, I think it's fair to say people have an image or a perception of of guys or you know maybe that aren't in their before thirty or young guys. And, and like you said, you're unknown or you were at this time at least. What what kind of things can you do that that helps you with an advantage. Are you getting away being aggressive? Are you, you know, what, what are some like Honestly, stuff? I feel you know, that, um, the way I, the way I always looked at it and the way I, I did it since I was a little kid, I hated to lose. That was my biggest, my biggest issue since I was a kid. I hated to lose. That was, so whatever I would do, I would always try to win. And even when I was a kid, I was like 13 years old. I would go play ping pong. And my mother used to tell me, Eric, did you win? I said, no, but I had fun. Trust me, no. Whatever you do, and this is how I was brought up, you, whatever I'm doing, I got to win. And I love trophies. So this is how I fought, always fought myself. Always fought myself. And if I, have, um, and if I, fight, if I feel like I'm weak in something, I'm going to double the energy to finally be the best at something. But as a 50-year-old, I'm in a, definitely in a disadvantage compared to these uh, youngers on the table when I sit down. Don't forget, I'm mixing business. I'm doing, um, you know, as a father of uh, of two, I do homework sometimes in the morning with them or at night before going to play poker. I mean, it's like, it's it's a it's a busy life before getting to the poker table. So for sure, right. I'm in a complete disadvantage. So uh, you know, it's like winning three WPTs. It's even even harder for a 50 year old than a 30 year old that has no responsibilities that just wakes up in the morning, just thinks about uh, going to the gym or having breakfast and just play. I just have sure. so many things. I speak to my accountant, to my secretary, 
Sometimes I speak to the principal in the morning just before getting to a poker table. So, you know, like the system is, you know, I have a lot of agitation when I get to the poker table. Yeah. No, I so, to lose, so. T- tell me a little bit about so, how you, how you deal with that then. Do you have, do you meditate? Do you have any relaxation stuff? Are you off your phone when you're playing and present or do you just, is that impossible with the wife, with kids, with stuff, other business happening? Are you, are, how do you manage that? Uh, I think it's more uh, mental toughness. Every time they people tell me, so how do you win? How do you win? You got to be mental tough. And I think uh, I'm, a, I'm a very, I'm like, I'm a mental, mental tough guy. You know, I'm, I'm a sweetheart outside. I'm, I think I'm one of the nicest guys outside the poker table. But when I get to the poker table, I can say, like, I, I, it's like, uh, I have this, uh, like, I get to a you point f- that that's it. I'm sitting the on the switch. table, switch it, no more Mr. Nice Guy, and uh, let's play poker. And, and you, but so like, for example, during the, that tournament, do you remember, are you on your phone or when you're playing, are you, is your phone in your bag? Are you on your phone at all? Or how, how would you say your yeah, level no. of is at the table? You know, the, the weakness in poker is to be on your phone. Why I do great on final tables is because you don't have access to your phone. So you're like focused every single second of any minute on the table. And that's where I feel that, um, the weakness for every poker player is we're on our phone, we're distracted, we're listening to music, and it's we're taking a massage, it's distracting. But not having a phone on a poker table would be the ideal uh, way of playing. And tell me about this this win. You get heads up. Well, you get you get down. Were you? How was your final table ride there? Because I, I, I mean, it's so it was what six, seven years ago, six years ago. Um, Coming up, actually, here this is tournaments coming up. Going to be a great one. We'll both be in there. Uh, what was how was your final table ride? Where were you in chips throughout that final table? And and how did uh, you know some great players that you were? I mean, really, the whole final table was stacked. Barry Hutter, Matt Glance, Blake Purvis, the only one I don't know. Chance Corneth, Matt Stout, Jake Baisley, uh, James Mackey, MIG.com from online. Yeah, the pool. Guys, these guys were all these I mean, guys were all world class. They were really like Jake but Baisley. Um, uh, uh, Chance, Cornu, Stout, I have the, the WPT Player of the Year on my right, uh, Moku Pahuja, that was like, you know, like you look at him, he's a, he's a, he's a tough guy to play. Yeah. And um, my philosophy was, when I sat down, I, in my, my mentality was, I'm the best player and I'm the guy to beat. They're not the guy to beat. Even if I was fourth in chips, my mentality was, I'm the best, and I'm going to play, and I'm the one that's going to win this. And, and so you, you know, when you play poker, so I had Mukupa Huja on my right. And always remember, you always, in poker, it's all about position. You always take from the right, and you give to the left. The ones on the left will take your chips. The ones on the right, you'll take his chips. So when you have a chip leader, on, 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 when I had the chip leader on my right, my buddies were telling me, Eric, stay away from the chip leader. I said, no, 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 let the coin attack the chip leader that's on your right and minimize on your left. And that was, and have the respect on my left. So that's why, that was my strategy on my left and let me attack the right. And that's how, uh, how, how I won my first title. How, how was uh, the heads up? When you got heads up, what was the chip stack disparity? Were you uh, ahead, even behind? No, the, the heads up lasted like, uh, heads up lasted like five, six hands. It was it was pretty easy. Wow. Yeah, of eights, he shot with king nine, and it was it was over then. It's just it, it was the heads up pretty simple. I said, take it back, Mukubuhuka. I think he would have played uh, some smaller ball poker and see if he can win more hands. But he, uh, he well, how he deep? Was, how many blinds was uh, that? How many blinds? And he gave it how many blinds was we that? At, um... uh, I think at the time we were at five hundred thousand. Or 250, 500,000. He had like 20 big blinds or 25 big blinds, and he shot the king nine and had a pair of eights. And, and you know, when it's meant to be, good things happen. It's, when it's meant to be, it's meant to be. You can't fight Absolutely. Me. Absolutely. Well, so let, listen, when you, so let me just ask you this, because this is what everyone's, I think, really wants to know. And when you tell me, you're telling yourself you're the best player at the table and you, you're positive reinforcement, positive thoughts. Obviously, you have some, you know, really good intuition for playing poker, you have to. And for you to have won three WPTs, you took second and other, you obviously know what you're doing and you've kind of figured out this, this game, if you will, 
But when you say I'm the best player at the table, you're saying you're telling yourself that, you know, let's like, listen, you're not, you do real estate, you have a family, you're in your forties, you're not grinding, you're not working, you're not playing every day, you're not playing, no. uh, do you even play online poker? It's called free rolling. Free rolling. It's called if so, I lose, I had fun. And if I okay. win, I win. So there was but, like, I'm, I'm in a win-win situation. It's so much easier to play in a win-win situation than when you're short in money and then you have to, you know, you have to fight fight for those funds, fight for your bankroll. You know, so right. In my state, everything was so much easier because, you know, I built, I built a business, I built a life, and poker was just my hobby to, uh, you know, just uh, to add to, uh, to what you like to do. And do you have a poker crew? Do you have guys you go over hands with? Do you do any type of solver work, studying? What is your, what is, what do you do for to work on your game? Come on, Eric. Um, give it, honestly, give it, I don't do it. it. Shoot me straight. Shoot Jeff, us straight out here. I would tell everybody. I would tell everyone. I don't study poker. I barely watch any poker. And uh, last year, I did. A, I finished second, and who finished fifth is my friend Ami. Ami, yeah, uh, Ami Rudin right. from uh, Montreal. Nice yeah, guy. I saw that. That's so. Yeah. Um, so he was for him. It was his first final table. And, you know, for since April, then end of May, it, it was almost like seven weeks before we get to the final table. So he would call me every day, tells me, Eric, I'm a little stressed. I'm studying all these players. Uh, what about you? I said, I'm not looking. I'm going to the final table. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to play with my instincts. That's all. It's wow. instincts, aggression, and confidence. And when you're at the table, you know, there's people that, you know, like I was telling Ami, Ami, at the final table, it's not the time to be friends with Maria Ho or Jerry Wong or, you know, not the time. When, you, when you're sitting at the table and you're at the final table, don't put yourself in your head that these guys are your friends. There's no friends. Outside the poker table, you become best friends. But on the poker table, you understand that it's you're in for yourself and you got to do what you got to do. No fear. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, yeah you're right. Well, you got to have that mentality. I, the, the advice I can give you, you come in, no fear. And when you get to a final table, this is when it's the difference between good and great. You have to pull those moves at the right time. You have to have the certain vision. And when you, you know, it's like, it's, you know, people say it's bluffing. Poker is not about bluffing. Poker is about feeling the weakness and being aggressive when you feel weakness. That's what poker is all about. Not doing a, a bluff and you just force it and doing bluffs. No, it's you feel the weakness and you've got to attack the aggression. What, what about in terms That's of like block, blockers and, and those type of things? Are you, are you in tune to that type of stuff? Or are you literally just playing? I mean, obviously you understand position and bet sizings and all these things. You've done it for so long and you've worked on your game and you've seen some poker and watched some stuff, but is that stuff you're doing? Like, are you, are you, how, how, how much GTO would you say you are versus feel? Don't tell me you don't know what GTO uh, is. I'm cutting the stream, Eric. If you tell me you don't know what GTO you, stands for, I'm out. You. I just, I just feel when I'm sitting down, I just feel that I see things that nobody sees. Since I, since I was a, since I was a little kid, I always had this vision. I always had, you know, it's like, I would always know or like uh, who to hang around with, what's good, what's bad. Same thing at the poker table. You know, it's like I have intuition. I see, I see a nine guy sitting down at the table. And when I see them sitting down, I know exactly what they're gonna, what they're capable of doing the minute they sit down. I have, I have this, I have this vision of reading uh, people's personalities, and that's uh, that's what helps me a lot. That's what helps me a lot. How do you think you're perceived? So sometimes I'll just sit down at the table. I'll just sit down at the table and I'm going to have a good day. Sometimes I'm sitting at the table and I'm going to have a bad day. Like, right. I was just, um, I was just uh, uh, playing the uh, Thunder Valley. Just came back from Thunder Valley. I see uh, Brian Altman on my left. I just rebought. Now Brian on my left. Brian Altman on my left. Yeah, great player. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so right away, when I see a guy like that on my left, that... Um, Every hand he plays, it can be his last hand that he plays. There's no, uh, there's no defense in this game. So I know that I have to limit 
every hand he plays, I've got to try to make it as small as possible because, you know, every, uh, he just feels aggression and he doesn't think twice. He just shoves all in, shoves all in, shoves all in. He just, uh, he's just there. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, he goes to rebuy. So when I have a player like that on my left, I try to minimize my left and try to be aggressive more on my right. Right. So that's well, how you, that's how you feel. You know, the minute you sit on the table, you feel what, what to expect and what's going to go, how your day is going to be. For sure. And who are some of the guys? I mean, you battled so many WPTs now. Darren Elias, obviously, with four WPT wins. What are, what are your thoughts on Darren and, what, and some of the other guys that you just have that you respect and, and feel are really great players right now that you've been battling with a lot in the last few years? Is there any players that stand out to you? Uh, definitely Jeff Gross. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll take that. This, this guy, Jeff Gross, he's solid, he's smooth, he's a smooth operator. We never know what you have. You're smooth. You're collected. You're what you right. call a real poker player. You're gonna make you you're know, gonna make these, me blush. These guys like I don't know, Chance Cormier, Brian Altman. These guys they have no defense. They have no defense. You can't win. You can't win if you don't have great defense. That's what I learned after over the years, is that you can't fall in love with your hand. Just throw throw it away. Find a better spot. Find a better spot. I was just talking to uh, guys on the table and. Uh, Schwartz at the final table of the uh, of the Thunder Valley. He was telling me, Eric, you played that hand where where you were five-handed, folded jacks, and you need the best best hand. You know, it was against Ami and Jerry Wong. You know, you'll see that hand. Uh, you know, you'll see it on TV. It's going to be televised last night the next month. So the, he shoved. The other guy is reshoves, and I have pockets. I know I have the best hand. But the secret is: is it worth risking? my jacks right there in that position or wait for one guy to be eliminated and I can choose my spots whenever I want with my 7 million chips that I have left instead of putting it in, knowing that I have the best hand, but I can get sucked out if there's, he's got two overs. So I don't like to, I don't like to play poker with luck. The minute you try to minimize your luck in poker, this is when you're getting to be a, you put in your chips in a, in a better position. So I always, I always open my way. Many times I'll fold ace king on a shove. No, I said to myself, why am I going to risk my ace king right now if I can use those chips without risking anything? I can risk them in a better spot. So that's what I think poker is all about: is choosing better spots. Always choose a better spot. Survive and choose a better spot. And um, what I learned over the years is get to the final table, get to the final six. Anything's going to happen when you get to the final six. It's a little like hockey. Get to the playoffs. And when you're in the playoffs, we'll see what happens. And it's the same thing in poker. Get to the final table. And uh, whatever happens, happens. When I won the Borgata, I remember there was this guy, uh, I think his name was Biasi, Biasi, Chance Biasi or something. And I saw that uh, he had all the chips. He had half the chips in play. And he wanted to win every hand. I told him, you know, you know nothing about poker. He tells me, what do you mean you know nothing about poker? I said, a smart player. He just, he knows his average stack to go to the final table. Take your stack, minimize, choose your spots, stick in there, get to the final table, and then you have a chance to win it. You're not going to win it the day before. So I told him, now you, you want to win every hand, what's going to happen? He finished seventh in the tournament. I did the same thing in Niagara Falls. When I went to Niagara Falls, there was another guy. He had all the chips. He wanted to win all the chips. I looked at him and said, you know what happens to us? You're risking too many chips for the wrong reasons. And he, uh, he finished ninth, and he had half the chips in play. So that's the secret about this game. It's like, know your average stack. Go to the final table. And at the final table, try to play your best poker. And uh, also, you need to be a little lucky as well. Luck doesn't hurt. How do you think that's you're per- can- that's great advice. How do you how do you believe you're perceived by your peers at the table that, that play with you, the guys that are regulars on the st- circuit or WPT? Um, your game. Do you think you they know, think you're aggressive? Do they think you're cautious? Where, where do you feel that they believe your how you, your style? If you think others what they think. You know about what? You? I was I was much more aggressive than I am right now. I just under the the game has changed. To be good in the, today, to to win in this in today's game, 
It's not like winning 10 years ago or winning the Hard Rock almost six years ago. The, the game is completely different. There's no weak spots. Every player knows how to play the game today. Right. Everybody knows how to play. There's a certain edge for sure later on, you know, but when you start a table at the beginning, everybody knows how to play the game. You know, today, yesterday, a couple of days ago, I was at Thunder Valley. I had two older guys. They were like seven years old. You should see these guys play poker. The 70 year olds five years ago, no, no, nobody used to play that way. You know, before they was weak, you say to yourself, they're easy chips to go get. There's not an easy chip to go get today. It's just you have to have confidence. You have to play a lot of position poker. You know, I see, uh, you know, you played a lot of cash game. You're on the big blind. You're playing a cash game. You're making a move on the big blind. Or today's poker. You know, when you have the, you know, when you're on the big blind and you're going over the top. Today, everybody knows how to play defense in position. You know, they'll flat call you, they'll float you. Uh, so you have to hit the flop, you had to turn, you have to hit the river. So you see, there's a lot of things that the minute you pull that move, before people used to fold. Players don't fold anymore like they used to. They'll come back, they, they know how to counterattack. So that, those are the things that you learn over the time that it's not the time to re-raise. You can make more ch chips with just calling, not risking. So that's where I got to the point in my game. Before I used to, you remember Jeff, I used to be a lot of a chip leader. I used to be chip leader so many times. Like, whoa, how come he's, he's already a chip leader? So no, again, he's a chip leader. I'm not the chip leader like I used to be because I had no choice but to change my game a little. And, and the, the less you shove all in, the better you have a chance to win a tournament. I was playing with Brian Altman a couple of days ago. I looked at him. I told him, I'm sorry, I don't know what you've been doing in poker. I know you're, you scored, you just won a tournament, you went to the final table, but you are the worst poker player I've ever seen. He tells me what? I told well. him, you are, you have a lot of holes in your game. And it's, you know, it's like, I, you know, it's, you, you got to realize that there's a moment to check. There's a moment to shove, but not every hand that you're playing, you got to shove it all in. You know, you got to yeah. choose your spots. You know, yeah, one, no, hand, I mean... one hand he goes in, I've keep it. There's so many hands he was playing and he would just risk his whole tournament. And I tell him, what are you doing? Why would you, why would you risk your tournament? I'll just give you a fast idea. I live with Ace King for 500 chips. He puts 1,500, there's six callers. Comes back to me, I have Ace King spades. I come back for 1,500, I come in at 10,000 chips. You know that I got a big, it, it can tell that I limped with a big hand. Brian Allman's got 38,000 chips left. He only invested 1,500 chips. What do you do? A smart player, what does he do? He folds, he uses his chips in a better spot. He shoves all in, queen, 10 of clubs for 38,000 chips. He only invested 1,500 chips. If you're committed for 10,000 or 15,000, you put it in, I understand. Awesome. When you just invested 1,500 chips, he shows all in with queen, 10 of clubs. I call him, he hits his 10. Now he thinks he's, now he thinks he's brilliant. And so this was the, this was the revive period. Twice. This, this is the revive period? Yes, but it's not just a revive period. I get it, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I think yeah. I think there's other school of thought on that. A lot of players that are that feel very comfortable and good, they know they know they have an advantage. They they push the envelope. There's now it's a, that's a debate I want to ask you about as well. The rebuy stuff, how you feel yeah. versus rebuy one reentry, yeah. or because guys are trying to build stacks and and it's good and bad because you get action like that, but it's also not necessarily yeah. traditional poker like the main event. These other things. Where do you stand on the rebuy uh, rebuy reentry deal? Before. Before I used to be much more aggressive. Okay, I can buy it. I can rebuy. I can rebuy. But the minute you start putting the rebuy process in your head, it's like now you bought once. You're gonna buy twice. You're gonna buy three times. The minute you th the minute you put that thought process in your uh, in your head, you stop playing great poker. Yeah. The way I look at it, it's like for sure. If I need to be aggressive at that minute, or if I have a flush draw, a, a straight flush draw, or something. That's when you have to put all your chips. But to invest 1,500 chips, you can use your 38,000 and use it for a following hand that's going to be more interesting and doubling up to 70, 80. You know, to, to, shovel, to shovel, I, I don't think it's a good, it's, it's a good move. You got, you, or, you got triggered, you're triggered by Altman. This guy set you off, bro. He's, 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 uh, he's definitely one of the guys that's been having great results. But I hear what you're saying, that that's, 
yeah, yeah, you know, that's obviously – like, it's like he knows that's not the best hand there, of course. And he knows that, yeah. you know, you're not – you don't have these two – yeah, I get it. Yeah, But you got to say, you know, if you start playing this game and you know you got to be lucky every time, that's not, that's not poker. Poker is strategy. You see, a little like you play. You know, you play, you feel the player, you see what's going on, you know when to put your chips, you know when you're beat. That's what poker is all about. You have to have a little strategy. But to come in like a, you know, sorry to say, but a little of a donkey, just, you know, putting your chips all the time, risking so many chips this is the secret of a poker is to risk the minimum and to go get the maximum i'm with you i want all right, so and eric i want to when i won the when i won the hard rock when i won the hard rock i never went all in once when i won the borgata i went all in once because sometimes you just have to do it but the secret of a poker if you don't have to shove it all in and you can you can not do it that's uh, the Helmut. That's the Helmut style. Game the Helmut, Helmut. I'm with you. That's Helmut doesn't like to be all in. I, I, I get it. I want to run through because Eric, I, I know you got your, you have family stuff, and you're gonna have to take off uh, on the earlier side today. I do want to run through a bit. So you win first, biggest WPT ever, field size wise by far. I was like I said, I was there with you. I witnessed it. Uh, very cool. You then get a third at Montreal in your home home Montreal town. You take a third, a fifth. You had a while, so we're talking, you know, what? Uh, it's been a while. It was a while till you got third. That was uh, 16, 17, a couple of years later. Then you get next year, WPT Montreal again, and then you go ahead, win the Borgata. What was that yeah, like? Yeah, I went to back to back Borgata? to the tables in Montreal. Yeah, that, what was that? Like, that's a title of his own, to do back-to-back final tables in Montreal. Jeff, you've been there many times. It's one of your favorite stops. Yeah. You know that the best players are in Montreal. It's a yeah, lot of good Canadian uh, players those, in that those zone. Those guys at the playground, and you know, you know that, that the quality of players in Montreal, they're very, very strong. There's no, uh, there's not a weak spot in the whole uh, on the tables. You know, no, there's a lot of very, two, three tournaments very a tough day. So very that tough. was my biggest accomplishment. And don't forget, they all, you know, they all want to beat me at the same time. So to do the uh, tables in Montreal while they all want a piece of your, of your skin. And that was a great accomplishment. And, and so you end up, uh, you end up, yes, you go fifth, you go third, fifth, and then you get three final tables in a row, actually, in the WPT that you cash, at least, and you take a first. How, how did that feel to get kind of, because, you know, anyone can win, yeah, win a tournament, you win a WPT, but now you got your second. Is that is that kind of like, all right, like, this is not a joke. This wasn't a fluke. You got some other final tables along the way. How, what was that like to take that one down? That yeah. had to feel good. That's, uh, I'm going to tell you, to all the married men out there, if you don't have the supportive wife, this great woman behind you that supports you, you will never win in this game. You need a wife that pushes you, that uh, you feel that you have a time off, you have time off the following week. My wife tells me, Eric, what are you doing next week? You have some free time? I said, yes. Go choose your tournament. Go win it. That's awesome. So you, yeah, need, you need a power, you need a, in poker, you need a powerful wife behind you. You don't need a I wife that tells you, when are you going to come? Why are you going to go? Well, my wife just knows that uh, the minute I'm playing a poker tournament, you never know when I can come back, come back that's, as a winner. That's beautiful. So you, you get know, your you gotta risk it. You got to go for it. No, you're so right. I you get to the get Borgata. There. I get yep. to the Borgata. The funniest thing of the Borgata is like I was in I was in Miami. I was renovating my building, so I was waiting for ceramics from my flooring to come in. So I had like nine days before with my wife. I'm going to fly to Montreal. And then I'll fly back when the, uh, when the tiles, my ceramic tiles come in. She tells me, you don't have to come to Montreal. Don't worry, I have total control of the kids. Go to, uh, you're in Florida, you have a direct flight to Atlantic City, go to Borgata and go win it. I went by myself, flew at five o'clock in the morning, get to the Borgata. At the end of the week, I won the tournament. If it wasn't for my wife, any other woman who says, come help me with the kids, I can't take it anymore. Not my wife, she tells me, go do your thing. And there's no room for a second. It's the first place or, or nothing. So I call her. I'll tell you the, the thought process. I'm at the final table. I t- six-handed. I'm, sh- I'm the list. 16 chips. And okay. I have huge. I had 2 million chips. On my left, there were 17 million chips. And I tell my wife, you know, there's no way I can. There's a, there's a wall on my left. There's no way I can win this. There's no way. 
At least yeah. maybe I'm going to finish fourth or fifth or, you know, like I'll, I'll try to suffer, maybe finish third. She tells me, Eric, you are the best player. She tells me, I feel like uh, I was telling It's like, uh, I feel like I was Rocky. It's like, Rocky, I saw this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she tells me, true. Eric, you're the yeah. best player in the world. There's no sixth, fifth. You are the best. When you sit down on that table, just remember that you're free rolling. These guys are the ones that are nervous. These guys are the ones with no titles. You're the one already that has a, your title. You just did two final tables. This is your third in a couple of months. Go do what you do best. Focus and go do what you do best. Yeah. I sat down on the, the table. My head was huge. It was this big. Was huge. <laughs> I come to the table and I, and I looked at these guys. So guys, I hope, you, uh, I hope uh, you guys don't mind finishing second because there's no way I'm finishing. Uh, I'm not finishing first. These guys look at me. It's like, what is this guy talking about? I'm short stack with 2 million. Dude. I have two stacks of 17 and 10 million. It's just, you have to have this set of mind and this, this powerful attitude that you're there. You're there to win. I know there's, you know, like today I feel like poker players, they understand aggressivity. I used to have a lot of problems on the poker table because they see I used to be so aggressive or, you know, or I didn't like to lose, but this is the thought process. You got to play. You got to think you're the best. You sit down, even if you're not the best. You sit down, you think you're the best, and you go do uh, and you go do your thing on a final table. And this is where uh, this is where I'm fearless. I, the way I played the Hard Rock, I came in fourth in chips, two big acts with Mary Ho and James Carroll. Yeah, this is the one. So this, so you get you win that title, and then you come back, and now the same summer Hard Rock five years <laughs> later, you end up final tabling this one as well, which actually goes to Vegas, right? And they filmed at the Hyper Studio there, and that's when you mentioned your friend. So then you come back and tell me about this one. You make the final table. So I get there. Uh, like I was telling you, my friend Ami, for two months, he couldn't sleep. He was telling me, Eric, uh, I, you know, it's like I'm a little nervous. I'm studying other players. I told him, don't study. Don't do anything. You come in. You're a smart guy. You know your thing. Don't put yourself to obstacles because every hand is going to be different. You can study, you can study, but what happens that moment and you got to study. I sat down fearless. I sat down. I said, I know where I have to go pick up the chips, try to minimize my left, attack my right, minimize my left, attack my right. And that's what, that was my strategy. Try to get as many chips as I can, try to get as many chips as I can. And every chip that you take on that final table is chips that they have less and pick your spots. And um, it's not to exaggerate, but I think it was just the way I played was like, hopefully you'll see it on TV or you can watch it on Poker Go. I think I played brilliant, brilliant poker. Is when push comes to shove, I think that's where I come out uh, playing my best. And I sat down, TV was there, commentators, everything was there. It's like, for me, it was like I'm playing with my friends at my kitchen table. And, and you, I got yeah, how, you, end, I got you end up taking second. So you actually had a two to one chip lead heads up as well. This very good player, James Carroll. That is that right? Yeah. yeah. How, how, but, uh, Jeff, like everybody, like every poker player knows and they feel when it's your time, you it's meant to be, you're going to win it. That tournament, I wasn't meant to win it. James Carroll, since he came in as a chip leader, he, he, that was his tournament to win. And I, I saw the whole I saw the whole cards later on. There was no way, there was no way somebody could have beat him that day. Even if the stars were lined up for him. I was gonna finish him, I was gonna finish him off in one hand. If he would just raise that flop, he had a straight draw on that flop. If he would raise that flop, it was over. I, I hit a set of threes. It's just you know, when when it's the stars are lined up for you, you're gonna win it. And that's what my wife tells me all the time. When I came in and I was I came in second and I was depressed, you know, it's like, you know what it is. The third title is a different feeling than a second title. Yeah, so you, you end up puts you in a different, you know. For sure. Different... There's, there's really no ones that have done it. So you end up so getting I came back and I told my wife, I told my wife, I'm depressed. It's frustrating. I was doubling chips. I had 38 million chips when they both had 9 million chips. It's like the way I brought it up, everything was brilliant. How did I lose? She tells me it wasn't meant to be. Your next tournament, what it's going to be meant to be, it's going to be yours. I get uh, three, uh, four or five months later, I get to Niagara Falls. That's a tournament I would never think I would have won. I, uh, I, broke, um, I broke aces twice. Twice. You know, yeah, so when it's your time, it's going to happen. 
when it's not your time, you just say to yourself, it wasn't my time, move on from it. And, and uh, that's, uh, that's the thought process you're gonna have. Don't look, that's the secret of a poker. Don't look what you did the last hand. Don't look at the tournament that you won before. You know, some players, they tell me, Eric, why are you, uh, how come you're not happy on the poker table? You just won a WPT. I said, what happened last week in poker? You, it, it was last week. What happens today happens today. So you got to play, you got to look moments. You know, there's guys that win uh, the World Series. They win the World Series. They just beat uh, 6,000 players. The next week they're playing and they're miserable on the poker table. It's not miserable. It's just what happens the week before. You know, it's an amazing accomplishment. But if you want to win this game again, you got to want it again. You got to fight for it. You got to want it. You got to want it. And you got to want it. And that's uh, that's where uh, whatever happens the week before happens the week before. Strive tell, tell, towards tell the me, future. tell me about you've got three titles now. It's second all time in the World Poker Tour to Darren Elias. What what are your thoughts on? Are, is that a goal of yours? Do you feel is that important to you? Do you want to chase that? Do you want to get four? I mean, obviously you want to get as many. And when you play, you're playing to win. But is that something you have your eye on to become the number one WPT title earner? Is that something you're looking to accomplish? Um, uh, for sure that, um, you have to have a goal in this game. You know, not when to try to get my fourth, when to try to get my fifth, you never know when it's going to happen. As long as you believe in yourself and you have a challenge, looking forward to a challenge, it can happen. So for sure, for sure, um, uh, I'm going to try to, for sure, I'm going after the fourth. There's no ifs or buts. I was just, uh, first time I went to, uh, LA Commerce and I went to the Thunder Valley. It was just, you know, I'm trying to get my fourth or be baby player of the year or maybe even finish second. So it's the first time I decided to do the uh, the uh, the LA swing. The Western swing for it. Oh, it's like it's, you know, from Montreal, it's still, a, you know, a six hour flight. It's still a three hour difference. It's not uh, that easy. So yeah, it's I, I find it. And, for uh, sure. What about, what about, wh where do you stand on World I Poker went Tour? For versus WSOP versus party poker. Do you do any other stops or you just love the WPT or you just too much poker already? So you only, you kind of focus on the WPTs or, or how do you like the other tours? Have you played other places in the world? You know what? um, what's your, you know, and the, the, you know, there's some places where you're lucky and there's some places that you're not, you know, there's some stops that you're lucky and there's some stops that you're not, you know, there's like at the hard rock. I know something magic is, could, could always happen at the Hard Rock. I feel lucky in the Borgata. I feel lucky in Montreal. You know, some places where you feel lucky. For WSOP, when it comes to go, I've never been lucky in this place. I can go there for 10 years. There's no way I can win anything. About I play at the Venetian. I never made it to dinner break in 10 years playing poker. There's places where you don't feel lucky. And there's places where you do. And WPT has been great for me. You know, we're all lucky to have this great... Uh, tour and you know it's like i was speaking to uh i was speaking to them last week i was telling them, you know at the end of the day you guys are doing us a favor you know, i know you guys need us to continue your tour but you guys are doing us a favor to organize these great yeah, uh, for sure. great tours great trips great vicinities uh, you know we're very lucky to have the world poker tour yeah no i mean and, they, uh, for, for sure. wsop i haven't been i haven't been very lucky at wsop i think the uh the players are completely different than wsop there's yeah. more of a different mixture, a different way of thinking. That's why I'm a, more of a WPT guy. You can, I think you can ask the same question to Aaron Elias. Aaron Elias also is a WPT guy that uh, does very well in WPTs and WSOPs. You uh, know where yeah. you've seen. Or a guy like Joe Cata. Joe Cata can never, uh, you know, you can, I don't know if you can even ever make the money in the WPT. While uh, when he gets to the Rio and WSOP, he's got like four titles and he knows he's, uh, everything he touches, he's going to win. Yeah, no, it's, there's that's definitely a, a mindset, a mindset thing. mentality on some of this stuff. What, what about, uh, how, do you have any interest you in, in doing some Triton stuff or playing some high, like traveling and playing some higher stuff? Or are you just, you love the circuit where you're at and just travel is for poker. It's not really yeah. for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a low ball poker guy. You know, it's like I would have made a much bigger name for myself if I wanted to play the uh, high rollers, the 25,000 or the 100,000, 20,000. It's just, um, uh, I don't have a, I'm, you know, when you're a family man, you have kids and kids yeah, in it's school hard. and then, you know, public schooling and later on college. So, you know, there's a lot of things that you don't want to risk uh, so much money. You know, I have a lot of responsibilities right. and I don't want to, 
up a 250,000 a year, 250,000 a year or 50 year. You know, no, of course. No, of course. You know, I just figured you know, right like, away it can be a couple of million. Yeah, no, you know, it's a good it's point. A, but I'm just saying you've had you've had a lot of success at these and by no means. I mean, yeah. these are main event tours. These are not small buy ins. These are 3,510 K's, all this stuff. It also adds up. There's rebuys, yeah. lies, events or reentry. Yeah. So, by you know, I just curious if that's something also your kids. How old are your kids now? Six and 10 or seven? They're they're you're, they're still at, a, yeah, you know, I have, uh, my son is six and my daughter's 12. It's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, but, they're uh, at their. I tell you, know, there's a lot of friends of mine, a lot of friends of mine. They tell me everything. You beat fields of 1,795 players. You beat fields of 1,240 players. And I almost beat a field. I finished second in another field of 1,356 players. Tells Mary, why don't you play the high rollers? You got 40 guys to beat, 35 guys to beat, or 60 guys to beat. It's 100 times easier. <laughs> it's more money, but your odds are 100 times easier. Right. You know, and the more you play with good players, the more you play, you play. Where I lose all my chips is the minute there's uh, someone weaker on the table, you try to, you know, uh, your, your game changes. But when you play with the best, you play even better. And that's my strength is whenever I play with, you know, good players, even, you know, you never know, but better players, uh, you have a chance. And I know if I start playing my whole role, I should. I'm going to, I'll get organized. I have to, uh, I'll have to do one year of high rollers and, Let's do it. Let's get you some action on State Kings. Let's get you set up on there. Yeah, and, and you need some uh, action, Jeff. Yeah, I'll buy, let I'll buy it. Your, let me know your, your – give me your list. I'll, I'll follow you. Okay. We got we got some – we can definitely get that going. Eric, I know you have an event tonight. I do want to take a few questions unless you got to dart off. Can we take a few? Okay. Yes. Right. To, can we do another 13 minutes? And I'll leave. Yes, that's perfect. All right. We're just going to – we're kind of rapid fire through these. Um, we'll just kind of – I'm going to pick a couple. Uh Oh, a diet. There's a diet question. What is your diet? Is there any uh, special diet stuff? Do you eat any everything or do you have a routine? Strict diet. Yeah. I don't know. It's like I, uh, I, I do cholesterol. I do a little diabetes. So I try to eat the less sugar possible. But, you know, when you travel, you have all these big buffets and it's hard to uh, it's hard to eat healthy when you're traveling. It's For sure. To eat healthy. I'm with you on that. Uh, I just make, I didn't know if you're like vegan or anything, if you got any special regimen. There's some questions about that. No, but I really, I, it would be great if I can discipline myself. Like go to the gym in the morning, like into the gym. So. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Little, it's not know, it's like, so yoga. Oh. There's so many things I can improve my game, but I don't know. I think I've got. Uh, Stick with what you're doing. That, I, don't, I wouldn't mess with that. <laughs> what, what is your favorite downtime other than poker? Oh, so you see what what relaxes me the most is I uh, the the minute I uh, I play I play a lot of golf, so the minute I can play golf, that's when I can play better poker. Last year, what I did, I brought my my golf uh, I brought my golf set to Las Vegas. So what I would do, I would golf every morning at seven o'clock in the morning. Finish by ten. Remember to the World Series by twelve. That's and nice uh, it helps a lot. It helps a lot to relax you. Or every time I lose, I try to hit a basket of balls. You know, when you're frustrated, you lose. You gotta find a way to like take off that stress and that you know that tension and that back beat. And yeah. you know, you go, you hit a, uh, a basket of golf balls, and you feel so much better. Like 20 minutes later. So yeah, no, that's my uh, that's that's that's, really. that's where it helps me. Golf during the summer, like a, a beautiful golf day. I'll choose any beautiful golf day compared to any uh, any poker. That I guess, so. But it's good to have both. Absolutely. What is the hardest thing you've had to overcome in your poker career? I'm sorry? What did you say? What is the hardest thing you've had to overcome in your poker career? Have you ever had a really bad downswing? Like you said, you used to play high stakes cash games. Did you ever think this isn't for me? Did you ever have any adversity? Oh, you know what? For some years, I tried to quit. Believe it or not, I tried to quit the game. Because... Um, that, f that frustration of losing in poker is the worst feeling you can have. When, you're not, when things are not going well, there's nothing more frustrating than not to win a hand for like five hours or six hours. Yeah. Like the no, like, yeah. I came in. I came top eight in chips. I sat down. I couldn't win a hand for five hours. I bubbled the tournament. You know, these are the things there. 
it's so frustrating and you know it's like and then you're aggressive on the tables and then you'll say you know it's like i never outside poker i never swear and this word there's not a bad word that comes out of my mouth on the poker table there's a few times there's bad words that come out of the poker table the frustrations that's the thing that um I, I I I like the least is when you're having a bad day and uh, your your system is uh, is not feeling right. No, I've That's, definitely seen you get passionate at the times. tables. I know I know how competitive you are. I've, I've got seen too much you. passion. I hate you know when you got too much passion and you hate to lose. And but to everybody watching, don't be scared to show emotion. You know, don't try to be the nicest guy possible. You know, you're the nice guy. You got great friends. You got a, a great poker table. Fight to win. Fight to win. I was. I saw one guy when I went to Borgata. I was on the plane. His name was a nice guy. His name was Jose Reyes. Great guy. He sits to me. Tells me, "Can I sit next to you?" I said, "Yes." I said, "Can I speak? Can I talk poker with you a little?" I look at him. I said, "You know what? The problem is you're not going to win because you're too much of a nice guy." He tells me, "Yeah." I said, so stop being a nice guy. When you sit on the table, forget the nice guy. Come in. Don't start making friends. I'm sure you got a lot, a lot of friends. You made a lot of friends over the years. Tells me, Eric, I'm the greatest friends in the world. I said, okay, you're on the poker table. Be friends with them outside the poker table. When you get to the poker table, pretend that nobody's your friend and you don't need to make more friends. And put, and you know, like get aggressive, be tough, and play. I gave him that advice. A week later, he sends me a message. I just won a WSOP. He won a short circuit uh, tournament. That's awesome. He tells me, Eric, I took your advice. I used to be the nicest guy in the table. I decided not to be the, the nicest guy anymore. And right away, a week later, he sends me a message. Eric, I just won the, uh, I just won my first point tournament. Thanks for your advice. That's, That's awesome. No, you're right. You, know, like, you got to have that mentality. You got to have be you, you, you got to go you for see, it. Jeff, you yeah, I'm with you. Jeff, you see, you're like you're the nicest guy. Everybody loves you. That's why I play catch to the poker table tournaments. I gotta, I gotta, yeah, we gotta hit that, that killer switch. Jeff, next time you get to the poker table, you sit down and you sit yourself. That's it. No you heard it right here. We're going to ship a major. Jeff. We're going to ship a major this year. We're going to replay this clip and I'm going to have to add Eric into my acceptance speech. You're right. I got, we got to, we got to trust me. There's a sense the last time there. in a while we've played. I've, we got a couple new tricks and gears, but I'm with you. No, you're right. You got to, I like that. That's honest and it's true. You don't need to be liked at the table. You're not there to make everyone's friend. It's like you're a, it's almost like a split personality. That's your character. You go there and, and you're ready to rock and, and you're not there to uh, hug and, and, you know, go to dinners with everyone. I'm right. with you. I'm right. with you. Uh, and, uh, and outside the poker table, you know, I've, you know, there's, I remember there's some French Canadian guys and took it. I see him the next time. So I'm not going to shake your hand. I said, what do you mean? I look at him and said, what, what happens on the poker table has got to stay on the poker table. If you start living your life on grudges outside the poker table, it's not good. It's not good for you. Whatever right. happens on the poker table, you got to, you, when you leave the poker table, everybody outside, you say hi, you shake your hands, and it's over. See, I saw James, I saw James Carroll in LA. The first thing I told him, I said, James, congratulations, you're a champ. You played amazing. You deserve it. That's it. That's that's the secret about this game. It's not because the guy beat you and uh, uh, right, or that uh, you know you gotta you gotta hate the player. Whatever happens on the table has to stay on the poker table. I'm with it's you. A little like what? something like Vegas. When Vegas, you don't <laughs> take it back with you. So. There you go. What what about uh, online <laughs> I poker? See, I play, play a lot of times. I play a lot of times with my friends of mine. You know, they, they end up on the poker table. I said, please, no hard feeling, right? Poker's poker. They tell me yes, and then that's how we, that's how we play. I love that's it. What story. about uh, what about online poker? Do you play any at all? Have you, do you play poker online or only live? Never played. I never played online. Never For online. Me, it's like uh, using the computer to be online was always work, work, work. I used to do a lot of. Uh, I used to be. Uh, I used to uh, design my own clothes and an import from China, Bangladesh, India. I was always online. So for right. me, it was like, last, if I have to go to the computer, it's going to be a pleasure. That's yeah. it. So I never, I never played hand online. Never did. There you go. All right. Uh, let's do a couple more. A, uh, we'll, we'll do a couple more, and then I know you have to buzz out on us. Um, let's see. Do you remember the first time you played for real money poker ever, like with friends, or where, where was it? 
yeah, I, I was like, uh, I was, I think, like 12, 13 years old. We used to play uh, all kind of games, like seven card stud, follow the queen, uh, five, you know, five, uh, like five card stud. I started I've been playing since I was like 12 years old. Friendly games uh-huh. with friends. And then, uh, and then in college, and then in college, I, uh, you know, I was playing. I used to uh, make a salary every week just winning poker. And That's... after that, I stopped playing for like 10 years. And then I got to spam, a span of time that I didn't play for years. When I got married, I started playing poker again. It was the weirdest thing for like 10 years of, from 25 to like 35. I, I, I stopped playing poker and then I got back into the game when Holdem came in and I saw, I was watching WSOP and I was watching all these guys play. And I, I have a friend of mine, the French Canadian guy, this is Eric Cajolet. Yeah. I still, you know, he was one of the first pros uh, doing well. And I was watching him on TV. I said, listen, if you can do it, I can do it. And uh, believe it or not, that was one of the guys that gave me the motivation to uh, <coughs> to play and uh, to play and uh, see if I can win. But in, in awesome. other ways, just if, you know, there's, if you take poker too seriously, you see, if you go on my social media, there's poker's taboo in my life. Nobody sees that I play poker or, you know, it's like I don't advertise my poker. It's uh, all the timeline shares or they add, it's like they add me on the timelines. I try to keep my poker as confidential as possible as, as, a, as a family man. And uh, my wife, sometimes she walks in the chair, tell me, look, you're, this is the wife of the winner. This is the wife of the winner. So this, you know, it comes with the territory. No, we don't have to publicize it, but uh, you can, uh, you know, you can. Yeah. For sure. No, of course. What's the longest vacation from poker since you've been married and started playing again? What's like the longest you'll go without playing? In a spare, like as a month, two months, a couple days. Yeah, there's uh, when I won in 2014, a little story. You know, when you win, you know, you're big and you think you're going to win every tournament. Poker yeah. is a thing that appreciate the moment because you can go three, four months without winning a hand. Not just or make. There's sometimes that you can't even win a hand for 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 weeks and months at a time. So what? So right. I got to Las Vegas. I played for five weeks. Couldn't win anything for five weeks. I was like, oh, I can't handle this game anymore. I stopped playing for four months after that. Wow. It was July, July, yeah. August, September. I didn't, I didn't play till uh, WPT November in Montreal. I took three and, months without playing. Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 the game. that's important, right? When you're hot, when you're hot and things are good, you press it. If it's not right, that's not when you just start playing everything and trying to jam it in. So, yeah, it's easier said than done. But I think that yeah. that is a strong attribute to have. Sure. You have yeah. to take some time um, off or else this game can be brutal. It can really hurt your heart. You have to take some time off. You have to heal. This uh, It's been three weeks. I played three straight weeks. I stopped enjoying the game. So I was supposed to continue Las Vegas. I decided to come back to Montreal and uh, spend some time and just take the week off. And uh, just, uh, you have to enjoy the game. If it's if you're playing just to win and you have to play because you need to make money, you're not playing the right game. This game has to stick to being fun, fun, and fun. Thing froze up on a second there. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, my computer froze up. All right, let's take one more, and then we'll let you run out of here. Um, well, what's your favorite? Give us a actually favorite hand. What's your favorite hand other than aces? Do you have like a special hand in your mind that just like you love to see? Well, what's your suited connector? What's your what's your guilty hand? You know, the one you just love to play. My guilty hand. My yeah. guilty hand is six nine suited. Okay. I'm born in 1969. Every time I have six nine suited in my hand. I can never throw it out. It's that's like your balance aces. It has that's to be the suited. one you just, six nine, you just rep. To throw. But that 6 9 suited, I can never, never part with it. I have to play. I'll have to play. I love it. 6 9 suited is my um, who, suited. What's your hand? What's your favorite hand, John? I, I, like, I like Jack 9 suited. I don't know. I just always loved that hand. Just even back when I first started playing, not knowing anything about hand charts or anything, I just that hand just seems to make. Do sneaky too, you know. You can make some sneaky yeah. straights or whatever. Um, all right, last one. Which is a favorite of your three titles? Which one means was the most special? The first one. The first one was 
of the best days of my life. It's like top four best days of my life. The first one was just, you know, it's like I had all my friends, they were all in Florida. Everybody was railing me. My, my mother was there. My mother always prayed that I stop playing poker. She never wanted me to play poker. My aunt watched me for the first time. I had one of my uncles, my friends, my wife just gave birth. Florida was just the most incredible thing ever. There's nothing that can that can top it. The second one, I was all by myself with the Borgata. So I just uh, lift up my hands and I went, I went to sleep. That was the thing. I just went to sleep. That was it. The third one, the third one was fantastic because I lost out of uh, finishing second at the Hard Rock. The third one was really great because my wife, the last time she saw me play was at the Hard Rock when I won in 2014. So it was just, oh. wow. Does your wife? Lecture. Does she know how to play poker? Does she know like what beats what? She has what or no, no clue. You know, she listens to me. But it goes, it, right. you know, it's like she's the supportive wife that listens to you, but it goes in through one you know, one ear and goes through the other. She has no clue. No clue. Do you, pl do you play PLO or any other games, mixed games, or are you strictly no limit hold them at this point? Yeah, I used to, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how uh, uh, I used to play years ago. It was PLO. It was like some really? no that... limit PLO in cash. Uh, oh. I was a great PLO player, but if you want to focus on, on winning tournaments, you can't play cash. And you can't play PLO because uh, it's it's a completely different game playing compared to playing tournaments. So I try not to, uh, yeah. to play them as much. So, do you, but do you still play some high stakes? Do you play cash? You still play cash games, or really not much now? It's tournaments is your at the main. Time I'll play cash, but uh, uh, cash doesn't uh, doesn't excite me anymore. It doesn't uh, I don't, I'm not ex it, when you win. It's, uh, it's even worse when you lose in cash. And right. I always tell everybody, it's like, if you're, if you're an aggressive poker player, you will never win in cash. You will never win in cash. If you're an aggressive poker player, in the long run, you're going to be a loser. The only way to be in cash, you're going to be a solid player like you, Jeff, you know, you're solid, you play some solid poker, you will, but uh, whoever's right. super aggressive, and uh, I, was, I was telling them, I was telling Altman, I said, Altman, the way you play, I hope you don't play cash because you're going to go broke. <laughs> don't play, don't yeah, play I mean, cash. I told the same thing to, uh, I told the same thing to Chance Cormuth. I thought, buddy, you're, you got a twitch in your brain. Guys like you, you can't play cash because you will have uh, $500,000 behind you. Your, tw your brain is going to twitch and you're going to let it go, those $500,000. Oh, man. The Eric guys that are super aggressive with a twitch in their brain do not play high. That an inviting uh, for sure, for sure. I like you it. You got to be I, I, tight. You got to be solid, tight and solid poker to win Ash. For sure. All right. Well, listen. Why don't when you come down to Miami, and, uh, let me know. We'll, we'll see. We'll be there at the uh, at the Hard Rock. That's a great place for you. I've had good results there as well. Right. Actually, my uh, big biggest score. It's going to be fun. And love, we got a fifty five dollar yeah. ticket giveaway. Courtesy of Party Poker, we're going to give one away on your account. So if all the people who follow along are eligible. You had a lot of questions. I wish we had time to do some more. I know you got your family event tonight, and I'm in Russia. It's uh, 1 a.m. Yep. here as well. But I, I appreciate you taking Jeff, the time. You're amazing. And, uh, you're the best. Good. I love you, buddy. Appreciate it. Much love, you're and let's do You're one of my favorite guys on tour. I love to hear, man. I'm, I'm very happy for your so success. I hope I answer questions and to any men out there. Yeah, all we'll the do it again. When we do it again, supportive wife. That's correct. A shout out to Amelia. Shout out to your wife for being very supportive because poker is great. You have a lot of freedom, but it's also some long nights and some, you know, it's uh, it's not for everyone. So you got to, you do have to have a good, good partner. Someone that supports you. You got to be tough. You got to be gotta, for sure. Gotta, I'm going to roll this ticket on your this. account. It's true. I'm going to roll a ticket for a $55 ticket. You tell me when and someone's going to a $55 ticket. Tell me when. Pardon? You're, you're Tell me what. Me. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to roll it uh, on your behalf. We're going to give a $55 okay. party poker oh, tickets. So you just tell me when, and I'm going to roll it. It's from you and party. Okay, roll it. Boom. Someone just won $55 ticket. Power Fest starts Sunday. We won't see Eric in that tournament. Luckily for everyone else, wins a lot of tournaments. So I'm going to message uh, Lazy Panda George 13Z. You won the $55 ticket, and Eric. We will see you very soon in, in about a month or, or less. There's the main events coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, again, congrats on all your success. Very happy for you. And uh, keep winning. Keep playing well. Keep being a good family man. And we'll, we'll see you in Florida.
All right, Jeff, keep up the good work. Thanks for everything, and I wish you all the best. Cheers. Eric Offred, everyone, three-time WPT champion. Yes, my man. Uh, Eric Offred, three-time WPT champion. Had him on the podcast. Been trying to get him on for a while. Going to let him go enjoy his family, and you can check him out on the different socials. Check him out. Watch his progress. He's got three World Poker Tour titles and going for more. So I'm sure we'll see him again at some more final tables, and uh, we'll keep catch up with him when he gets his fourth. So thanks again, Eric. Have a great night. Perfect. Okay, Jeff, See get bro. some rest. Go to sleep. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. Take care, buddy. Bye. Bye, everyone.